Uh, I'll, I'll start with some background on myself because I actually think it sort of interestingly mirrors uh, what we heard from Federico. So uh, I'm originally a computer scientist uh, and sort of when Federico in 2014 uh, started to delve into data science, that's the same year I started to delve much more into digital humanities. And nowadays uh, I'm leading a research group on human sciences computing interaction um, at the uh, University of Helsinki. Um, and my I've been tackling with the exact same questions of, of what are the sort of trustworthy epistemological foundations of research, computational research in the humanities and so on and so forth. So um, for the last several years, what I've been doing is, is trying to figure out these trustworthy general research workflows uh, in digital humanities and computational social science. And the way I've been doing that is that I've been partnering with multiple research projects in humanities and social sciences that want to apply and have applied computational approaches. And then through looking at the requirements in those projects, but looking at sim simultaneously requirements from multiple projects, I've been able to derive sort of more general workflows and, and tools, technical tools, but also sort of um, higher level research and interactional workflows between the different partners in the project. So this presentation is uh, a particular case study from the Flows of Power project, uh, which is a project in media studies seeking to understand the role of media as, an, as both the site as well as an active agent in political discussion and how these have changed in the last 20 years. As material, we are using sort of Finnish data sets consisting of, of all the news articles from uh, four different news sources during those 20 years. Uh, a key concern is that we want our research to be of interest to traditional media studies scholars. So we don't want to just be to the uh, digital humanities audience. It needs to have an impact in the core discipline. So to do that, uh, we really need to invest heavily into developing trustworthy and sort of uh, particular workflows uh, to be able to do that. And in this, uh, in this paper, uh, there's a particular case where we wanted to identify how affectivity, uh, sort of emotion and, and, um, and related uh, phenomena are encoded in journalistic texts, which are a very particular genre of texts. So uh, emotion isn't direct there, it's actually very hedged. Uh, and it's sort of hidden in different places. And we wanted to find how it works in a quite a sub subtle way. The results are basically that uh, it gets outsourced into quotes, quotations, uh, and manal managed through hedging behavior. Um, and, and, um, and that article uh, denoting those sort of outputs has been now published in the journal Journalism. Uh, but in this paper, I'm talking purely about the process of, of, of research and how that sort of is actually a generally applicable template that we've used also elsewhere. So if we want to develop workflows that are interest, of interest to a subject discipline, uh, we need to be able to capture something, what is actually relevant, what the media scholars in this case are interested in, the sort of quite subtle uh, notions of, of, of affectivity and its hedging. Our workflows need to be able to sort of make sense and support also this qualitative close reading interpretation of these complex phenomena. And a very, very big concern in all of these projects that I've dealt with is that the data is always crap and horrible. And there's a huge need to tackle with the noise and bias. We'll have a, a presentation on this in the main conference tomorrow. And 
as a sort of a processual concern, often at the start of particularly an interdisciplinary collaboration project, no one has a clear idea of what we are actually doing. And there isn't a sort of a established clear protocol of how to come from the original data you get to the results that speak to the subject discipline. So you need some way to sort of in the process facilitate uh, directing it into the proper uh, direction. So what we've done is, is uh, we've sort of designed the whole process uh, around facilitating iterative development and forming a common understanding between the participants coming from different disciplines. Because this sort of translation issue that Federico also mentioned is a really huge concern. So uh, but right from the start, you got to have a Slack space where you talk between, and it needs to be active, and you need to sort of talk between the participants there, particularly as we are sort of working from two multiple different universities and, and, and don't see each other daily. We've also held uh, reading groups to get a notion of what the other uh, viewpoint of the other participating partners are. You really need to build this common language and understanding and you need to build an interest in the other parties uh, sort of there needs to be a genuine genuine interest in the viewpoint of the other parties for this to work at all technically uh, so we've sort of uh, then we want to build as soon as possible an environment where we can also each look into the data from our own perspective and uh, we started this with ready tools that we had available. So we sort of threw uh, structured data into Google Sheets and just looked at it there. Uh, we threw the full text into a ready sort of uh, ready search interface that I had from prior projects. And, and the key thing here is that all of these tools that we have been developing and are using have, uh, have URLs that sort of store the state. So you could share them in Slack and point to a particular file, a particular phenomena, if you're the media scholar, or uh, sort of highlight to we as computer scientists could highlight to the media scholars uh, what our computational algorithms were able to dig up from the data using practical actual examples. And uh, all of this was also sort of whipped together uh, into the computational part in a sense, in the way that we could iteratively develop it and improve uh, the approaches. And once we got something up, uh, the media scholars could look at it and say, is this actually what you're interested, what they were interested in or not? And then we could tune it. And we sort of uh, didn't, didn't sort of try to do the ready thing right from the start. Instead, we sort of uh, took what was available and then replaced each bit with something that was sort of better matching to that. So, uh, and as a sort of a small concrete example, we of the types of interaction that we were looking for in this was also that we wanted each of the different types of tools to feed into each other. So uh, we had one a shiny or a couple of shiny apps for aggregate visualization, these sort of statistical visualizations. But then when you found an outlier there, uh, you could click on that outlier and it would take you to a different interface that would have our computational indicators highlighted so that you, uh, we could evaluate, first of all, the media scholars people could uh, interpret why this is an outlier, but they, we could also evaluate if it's an actual outlier or is it a bug in our sort of computational processing. So through this and going through many, uh, many iterations and replacing the sort of uh, initial tools with, with ones that were a better fit, we moved onward. And in the end, sort of through this meta approach of, of building very, very quickly an environment with the tools that we had and then replacing them and always highlighting interaction and discussion and, and forming a common uh, agenda, I think that we were able to 
create a sort of a meta template for fruitfully directed um, DH research, which is able to move toward questions of interest, both fast as well as with a high capacity to capture what is important for, for from the perspective of the domain expertise. And for myself, as a sort of a, a computer scientist, what I'm interested in is the complexity of the data and the co complexity of the problems. And this also allowed me very much to focus on those and look at those issues and, and, and focus on uh, developing solutions that I can then publish in a computer science con uh, context. Uh, there's more stuff in, in, in the text, uh, the particular scan scenario and the indicators we, we developed and we'll have multiple presentations during the conference uh, on this project and the stuff that we've developed. But uh, in this context, I'll stop here. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much.